day 988 um just got off of a coaching call it was it was so good um like these calls are breaking chains for people they're getting delivered like this call was you know we were all talking about the spirit of pride and you know this client like he's he's here to fight deception in the world and the thing that holds him back most is is pride and the spirit of pride and it's uh it's not easy to coach someone who is controlled by a spirit of pride and um and so we're going through the conversation and and then towards the end it was just like i just had to be real and it's incredible like i don't know it's like god has given me this ability to speak truth with love so I, I say some things that would normally trigger people, but they're able to receive it because God gives me some kind of something to be able to say it with love. And it's just like crazy, this this ability that that only comes from God to speak truth and love. Um, but I just think about like, you know, what this lady said on this call two weeks ago, that God gave her a message that when Chris gave his life to Christ, heaven gave him a sword of truth to pierce the deception and the darkness. And like God has just given me this ability to see the truth in people and speak it in a loving enough way that they're able to receive it. And this was the the most challenging because the pride is so, it's just so there. And, um, and by the end, I got to see the real him for the first time since we started this coaching. And it was just like, man, this guy who you're being right here, this is like the love of Jesus that you have. Like it's it's palpable. It's so different. And uh and it was amazing to be able to to fight through that and and fight that spirit of pride and and he did such a good job. I know it wasn't easy for him to hear those things, but he he was open to it and it made it a change. And I just got off the call and I looked up at that at Jesus and I'm just like, thank you. Thank you for this, what you're doing on these calls. Like, this is, we're doing such deep spiritual work on people. Like, thank you, Jesus. I, I just feel so honored. I feel so blessed. Like, gosh, I couldn't do this without him. There's no way I just, I don't know this stuff well enough. And the things that he revealed, you know, he just, he, he revealed to me on this call that, you know, these spirits that we fight against, it's because there's an emptiness in us and they come to fill that emptiness. So for example, for me with the spirit of lust, what I was really seeking was connection. And there's an, this, there was this emptiness inside me of connection. And so when I'm watching porn or something like that, like for a moment, I feel connection and then it's gone. And it was like the spirit of lust knew that, oh, Chris wants connection. So let me give him false connection, counterfeit connection and, and use it to destroy him. And, uh, you know, the Bible says when a spirit leaves, it goes and finds dry, arid places and it comes back to an empty home. It comes back to the, the host that it left and it brings seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And I was telling him like that spirit has left and it tries to come back. But it, 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 I don't let it stay. But that spirit has left and it opened up this space inside of me. And I filled it with the word of God. So the connection that I was seeking, I now feel more connected to God, more connected to people, and more connected to his word than ever. Because now I'm studying the word in, in the Greek. And I'm really understanding what the word is. And so I feel more connected than I have before more connected to God, more connected to others, more connected to myself, more connected to the word. Because I, that empty space, when that spirit left, I filled it with studying the Bible. And I was just like, wow. And I had no idea that that's how that worked. And I explained that to him and he was like, whoa. And I was just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I didn't know that. Like that just came out of nowhere. I had no idea what was going on. But now I can see it where I know the lust will never will never overtake me again because I have filled its space where it used to live. There's no room because there's the word of God and a passion for the word of God and feeling connected to the word of God by studying it in the Greek. And so it was just like, wow. So I got off this call and just thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. Like, man.
And then I had this thought, I wish I could have been this person when Araceli and I were together. Like, I wish I could have had this open of a heart. I wish I could have had this much wisdom to, to really support her and help her in ways and see things that I couldn't see before. And it was just like, dang. Because the people that are in my life now, like they're benefiting so much from what God is doing in my life. And um, it was just this moment of like, I wish I could give this all to her. But, yeah. It's just like when you experience these things, when you go through these things, you just want to give it to the people you love the most. And it's like, I just want to give this to her. All of this wisdom, all this stuff I'm learning, like, yeah. Because I know it just transformed things like, but I just got to trust that, that God is giving it to her or, or making it available to her. And she just has to choose it. And I know it's not hard. It, it's not easy choos choosing these things. This, uh, this spiritual warfare is not easy, but just understanding that, man, there's, we're fighting against spirits. You know, one day she told me uh, she gets anxious a lot. And I, I didn't know that. I was like shocked when she said that because she, she seems so cool and calm and collected all the time. And, you know, it was just like back then I thought it was just an emotion. Now I know it's a spirit of anxiety and now I know how to fight it. I know how to destroy it. I know how to make it leave. And it's like, man, like God, <laughs> how can I get this to her? How can I, how can I? How can I like help her walk through this? Because I just, I love her so much. I care so much about her. That hasn't changed in any way. And it's just like, man, I wish I could, I could give her this because there's so many things like when we were together that we could see in each other that we needed a breakthrough in or we needed to work on and, and neither of us could really figure out how to get past it. And, and like now I'm learning how to get past that stuff. And it's just like, man, I just want to give this to her. So anxiety never never comes at her again and and never does this and never does that and or sadness or anything like that and ah oh man father i just pray that as she receives this that whatever you're giving to me god this this transformation this realization this this wisdom god that you just give it to her and give it to everyone that i love and everyone that I love that I don't even know and everyone that I don't love. Like, God, just bring your truth to the world. Bring your revelation to the world, God. We need this. We are so desperate for this. Our souls are so desperate and thirsty for your truth and your word and your transformation. Um, yeah, please, God. Dang. <laughs> the, message is, uh, the message I just got is, well, why do you think I created you? Wow, I'm like, please, God, bring this revelation to the world. And then it was like, why do you think I created you? <laughs> you are me bringing it to the world. And uh, wow, 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 wow. Um, when God was speaking to me months and months and months and months and months and months and months ago, this is what I wrote. And he said to me, Chris, I called you to lead people back to God, not to lead a revolution but a revelation. And a revelation is an act of revealing or communicating divine truth. Something that is revealed by God to humans. Wow. That's what I'm here to do to lead a revelation. Hmm. And it's crazy because at the time when God gave this to me, I called you to lead people back to God, not to lead a revolution, but a revelation. I didn't know what a revelation was. I had heard the word, but I didn't know what it meant at all. So I was like, 
maybe I'm just making this up in my mind. And then I found out what it meant. And it was like, wow, communicating divine truth. And now everything is lined up. Like, Chris, you're here to, to speak truth to people. Speak truth, speak truth, set them free. The truth says, and it's just like, that's what I'm doing now. Um, which is just unbelievable. So, thank you, God. And I just open Revelation. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. This is God speaking. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. The one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Wow. It has Revelation 3, 20 through 21. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm, 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 mm. Man, God's working. Okay, I have one more coaching call.